today, let's talk about computer ethics. Here, we'll also discuss netiquette, which is a specific set of computer ethics that deals with proper communication and use of the web. Let us also familiarize with some unethical conduct in the cyber world. First, let's define the term ethics. Ethics is said to be based on well-founded standards of right and wrong that prescribe what humans are ought to do. It deals with placing a value on acts according to whether they are good or bad. Therefore, when we say computer ethics, it is a set of moral principles that regulate the use of computers. The following rules have been established as the most widely accepted computer ethics. These rules have been used to create national and international laws regarding computer use and defining computer crimes. These are the Ten Commandments of Computer Ethics, as listed by the Computer Ethics Institute. Thou shalt not use a computer to harm other people. Simply put, if it is bad to steal and destroy other people's notebooks, it is equally bad to access and destroy their electronic files. Second, thou shalt not interfere with other people's computer work. Creating and deliberately spreading computer viruses is unethical. What are computer viruses? These are small programs that disrupt other people's computer work by destroying their files, taking huge amounts of computer time or memory, or by simply displaying annoying messages. Third, thou shalt not snoop around in other people's files. Remember that reading other people's private messages, let's say in Viber or Messenger, without permission is as bad as opening and reading their letters. This is invading their privacy. Fourth, Thou shalt not use a computer to steal. If bank robbery is bad, then using a computer to break into the accounts of an individual or company and transferring money should be taken as bad too. Fifth, thou shalt not use a computer to bear false witness. Spreading false information to the world is bad. For instance, sharing false rumors about a person or false propaganda about historical events is wrong. Sixth, Thou shalt not use or copy software for which you have not paid. What is software? Software comprises the entire set of programs, procedures, and routines associated with the operation of a computer system. It is an intellectual product. Therefore, software is like a book. Obtaining illegal copies of copyrighted software is as bad as photocopying a copyrighted book. Seventh, Thou shalt not use other people's computer resources without authorization. To guard information in a computer, user adds ID and password. It is unethical to bypass this authorization system. It will be considered as hacking. Eighth, thou shalt not appropriate other people's intellectual output. The electronic material you produce are your own intellectual property. What is intellectual property? It refers to creations of the mind. It can be an invention, a design, a brand name, or a literary and artistic work. Note that it is unethical to copy other people's materials without proper authorization. This may be called as piracy and is unethical. Ninth, thou shalt think about the social consequences of the program you write. If you are to create a program or you are included in a team creating a program, you must think of its effects to the society. You must think of its possible uses. It must not be in any way cause harm to the society. For example, if you are creating a program that shows the operation of an airport, you are responsible of the correctness of information. Also, who and where the program can be accessed. Confidentiality of the information is important, and if substantial information is accessed by hackers, then the entire operations, let's say, of the airport might be at risk. Tenth, you shall use a computer in ways that show consideration and respect. You may not see the people you are interacting with in the computer, but you are still expected to be nice and understanding, and be responsible with your actions. Next concept that we are going to talk about is netiquette. Netiquette is a shorthand for network etiquette. It is a set of rules that determines how to properly communicate and browse the web. It is important because it concerns online safety. Given the rise of cybercrime activity, you need to stay safe on the internet. 
Here are 10 best internet safety tips you need to be aware of when online, according to Paul Cuckoo in his blog, which was updated last November 17, 2016, at heimdallsecurity.com, which is entitled Netiquette, Definition, and 10 Basic Rules to Dramatically Improve Your Safety. First, keep your software or apps updated and delete the ones you don't use. Keeping your software up to date will go a long way into keeping you safe. But an equally important step is to remove software and apps you no longer use. Unused software might be targeted by attackers and will keep on running in the background of the computer operations. Second, be careful when dealing with emails from unknown sources. An important rule to stay safe on the internet is to be suspicious of strangers. Don't trust emails from strangers, especially those that ask you to click a link open an attachment, or send a file to the sender. It may be a phishing email when you are urgently asked to do something, either because your account may be compromised or your online purchase may have encountered some issues you need to sort. What to do when you receive such email? Ignore it completely. With that said, don't reply to the email, don't click the malicious attachment, and don't click the dangerous links in the email that could download malware on the system. Third, don't click the link or online ad. Remember that a lot of things could go wrong when you click a link from a source that seems fishy. Fourth, just because it's free, it doesn't mean it's safe. Note that free software may be a vehicle for malware. As a rule of thumb, paid software is almost always secure and safe. Make sure you use a trusted free program that automatically updates your vulnerable software applications to close security holes in your system. Fifth, do not reveal sensitive information online. Cyber criminals check your social media to gather information about you. Those data they gathered might be their clue to guess your passwords. Improving your social media security settings is a good first step in preventing an identity theft or doxing. What is doxing? It is a cyber attack that involves discovering the real identity of an internet user. It is analyzing information posted online by the victim in order to identify and later harass the person. Sixth, keep your account information for yourself. It is advisable to use a different password for every website you register. The downside, however, is the difficulty of memorizing them. Password managers might help to solve this issue. It will help you remember the login details of every site you use and can generate some strong password to use. Seventh, report illegal activities or offending content. If you notice offending language attacks like cyberbullying, hate speech, or any form of harassment, do not hesitate to report it. Eighth, what you post online stays online forever. Search engines may save and classify your content on so many online servers. Your posts and comments may remain there and you never know when they come back at you. Your internet activity may be connected and identify who you are in real life. When posting on forums, these are some handy tips. Ask if the information you are posting is too personal. Delete or edit past posts which reveal too much about you. Ask yourself if your content could affect your personal or professional life in the future. Ninth. Use antivirus protection before you go online. Tenth, create backup copies for your important stuff. There are so many reasons something can go wrong for you and your sensitive information, even if you followed all the netiquette rules. So make it a habit to create backup copies. Another popular rule of netiquette is from Virginia Shea's core rule of netiquette. Let's briefly talk about each one of them. Rule 1. Remember the human. Remember, your written words online are read by real people, all deserving of respectful communication. Rule 2. Adhere to the same standards of behavior online that you follow in real life. You should do your best to act within the laws and ethical manners of society whenever you inhabit cyberspace. Rule 3. Know where you are in cyberspace. Depending on where you are in the virtual world, the same written communication can be acceptable in one area where it might be considered inappropriate in another. Rule 4. 
Respect other people's time and bandwidth. Make your written communication meaningful and to the point without extraneous text or graphics or attachments that may take forever to download. Rule 5. Make yourself look good online. In the cyberspace, you will be judged by the quality of your writing. So keep the following tips in mind. Always check for spelling and grammar errors. Know what you're talking about and state it clearly. Be pleasant and polite. Rule 6. Share expert knowledge. Information sharing capability is one of the reasons the internet was founded. Hence, let's not forget to share intelligent, true, and verified information. Rule 7. Help keep flame wars under control. First, let's define flaming and flame wars. According to Shea in 1994, flaming is what people do when they express a strongly held opinion without holding back any emotion. Flame wars, on the other hand, is a term used when two or three people exchange angry posts between one another. Flaming may not be forbidden in virtual communication, but flame wars must be controlled. In addition, don't feed the flames. Guide the discussion back to a more productive direction. Rule 8. Respect other people's privacy. Just as you expect others to respect your privacy, so should you respect the privacy of others. Be sure to be on the side of caution when deciding to discuss or not to discuss virtual communication. Rule 9. Don't abuse your power. Remember that knowing more than others do or having more power than others may have does not give you the right to take advantage of anyone. Rule 10. Be forgiving of other people's mistakes. Remember that not everyone has the same amount of experience in the virtual world. If it's a minor mistake, you might want to let it go. If you feel it's necessary to respond to a mistake, do so in a private message rather than a public place. Here are some issues or considered as unethical conduct in the cyber world. First, invasion of privacy. This is the wrongful intrusion into a person's private activities by other individuals or by government. Although the right to be left alone is not always superior to the rights of the public and it may or may not exist to a lesser degree with regard to the life of a public figure, such as a politician or other person in whom the public has a rightful interest. Second, identity theft. Theft is the taking of another person's property without the person's permission or consent with the intent to deprive the rightful owner of it. Third, hacking. The word hacking has two definitions. The first definition refers to the hobby or profession of working with computers. The second definition refers to breaking into computer systems. Fourth, copyright infringement. It is the unauthorized or prohibited use of works covered by copyright law in a way that violates one of the copyright owner's exclusive rights, such as the right to reproduce or perform the copyrighted work to make derivative works. Fifth, piracy. For electronic and audiovisual media, unauthorized reproduction and distribution is also commonly referred to as piracy. Cyber piracy involves various deceptive practices that companies or individuals engage in to profit from online users. Sixth, online defamation. Defamation is a false and unprivileged statement or fact that is harmful to someone's reputation and published with fault meaning as a result of negligence or malice. Libel is a written defamation. Slander is a spoken defamation. This ends our discussion about computer ethics. Here are the references. 